All right guys, welcome back to the channel and today we're gonna talk about three tips to help you hook a bowling ball, stay tuned. So we are in beautiful Detroit, Michigan right now for the World Series and we're actually at the Bowl IQ which is a crazy, lovely, <laughs> amazing uh, facility. <laughs> uh, so we thought we could shoot a couple instructional videos um, and talk about uh, A, hooking a bowling ball here. Okay. Uh, you know, hooking a bowling ball is one of the most important things we can do and there's so many variables that go into hooking a bowling ball. There's speed, there's revolutions, there's the ball you're throwing, there's the lane, topography, we can go on and on. Yeah. Today we're gonna break it down to three tips. Uh, the first tip is going to be the actual bowling ball. Now, the three main types of bowling balls we have is plastic, urethane, reactive. Uh, Brad, can you talk about a little bit about what each ball is, and then we'll get some shots? Well, the plastic ball is, is technically made out of polyester, and that's meant for more so for spare balls. People buy them, they're like 70, 80 bucks. Yeah. Uh, they go straight. Better bowlers use them as their spare balls. Then you have the urethane that actually hooks a little bit more than the, than the plastic, and actually nowadays, the urethane has I mean, become everyone's got it in their arms quite a bit. But then you have, but then you have the reactive, and the reactive is the the higher dollar balls. It's the big cores with the strong covers that the technology nowadays that they didn't have in the in the 70s. And so those are basically three shots. So I'm gonna I'm gonna throw a couple shots with each one. Yeah. So let's go. Yeah. Let's throw a shot with urethane. Just a normal shot. Um. All right. So this is a pitch black. This is my urethane that I use. Just pretty standard drill. Yeah, and let's just see the reaction, then we'll throw a reactive ball in the same spot. Let's see the difference. Okay, so not a whole lot of motion out of that ball. I'm afraid I'm gonna <laughs> miss the building right again. <laughs> All right, so now I have a reactive ball here. I'm gonna try and hit that exact same spot. But that, and and let's make it clear, that's what that ball's supposed yeah. to do. It doesn't make it a bad ball. No, no, it's just this may not be the right pattern. When there's a lot of friction Correct. on the lane, that ball's going to come into play. So same spot, we're going to throw a reactive ball here, okay. and let's watch the difference. Okay, so we touched the head pin. Yeah, it did hook more. Yeah, you can see there was another, I don't know, five to ten boards more hook out of that one. Yep. So then that brings us to our second tip here, mm -hmm. and that's actually knowing where the friction is on the lane. Now this may seem simple to some, but for those of you who are maybe new to bowling or um, are, are looking to learn, generally there's more friction on the outside parts of the lane compared to the uh, middle mm -hmm. parts of the lane. This is why your typical house shots play really easy because you have um, a lot of hook or um, dry boards, there's not a whole lot, whole lot of oil to the right, and then they got a whole lot of oil in the middle of the lane. Correct. So your ball will hook and then kind of sit there and just kind of funnel to the pocket. Yeah. That's why these house shots are really easy. Yep, it's meant to where if you miss left, it hits the oil and goes straight, and if you miss right, it sees the friction. So if you're having a, if you're having a hard time getting your ball to hook, get farther right toward that friction. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and that's why the patterns we bowl on are a little bit more difficult in the PBA and when you start bowling on some sport patterns is because they put the same amount of oil on the outside as they do the inside. Yeah. So you don't have that free hook yeah. to throw it to. Yep. Um, so Brad, let's actually throw a shot. Okay. Let's throw a shot outside of five and there should be friction there, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, we hope. We hope. <laughs> we're not sure what we're bowling on. Okay, so yeah, so, you, plenty of friction there. Yeah, you can see there we moved everything farther right and that's where the friction is. Then once you find that friction, you just kind of move left yep. off of it till you can control it and you get your ball to the pocket. So you get that perfect line going right to the pocket. Yeah, so now that brings us to our third tip. Now this is the, it's the hardest tip to, uh, to change, yeah. but it's also one of the most important sure. to getting your ball to hook. Yep. And that's actually creating revolutions on the bowling ball. Now, there's a lot of different ways to yeah. pr uh, produce revolutions. We've kind of talked about some in other videos, but Brad, give us a little quick rundown on uh, how to maybe cr uh, create revolutions or why revolutions are important. So the one thing that if I had to give you one tip, it would be to, the, the farther under the ball you can get your hand, the more you can start under it, the more potential you have to actually rotate it. If you just start on top of the ball, then that ball is just going to fall off your hand and it's just going to knuckle down there. Right. But if you really start under it, then you can, at the release, ro actually physically rotate it. 
Um, and I think a lot of amateurs out there, they, they have a hard time getting under the ball because they're not used to it. Majority of the time, it feels like they're just naturally throwing the ball, but in reality, they're actually on top of it, but they don't know it because they can't see it. Yeah, it's like so. anything, you know, we need to create leverage at yeah. the bottom to get through. I mean, if you were trying to pick up a really heavy weight and you tried picking it up from the very top, like a rock, like try your, say you're trying to pick up a boulder. Yeah. If you're trying to pick up a boulder from the top, yeah, you have no so leverage. Yeah. But if you get under it, yeah. then you have some power. So the, probably the number one most important thing when it comes to putting revolutions on a bowling ball is actually just getting your hand under it. That way the potential is there. You can actually put yeah. it on yourself. And then that puts our hand in a really good position to just rotate through the bowling ball. We're covering a bigger surface area. So that the, the creating revolutions is hard. Very uh, hard. It, it takes a lot of practice, <laughs> but it is one of the biggest um, factors in sure. actually trying to get your ball to hook. So all right guys, there it is. Three simple tips on how to get your bowling ball to hook. I know that may seem beginner for some, but those are the very foundations on trying to, on when you're trying to get your ball to hook more. Sure. Make sure you follow us on social media, on Instagram, head on over to insidebowling.com for our merchandise. Patreon. 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 Check us out on Patreon. Yep. <laughs> Thank you guys.